for the majority of us, it's hard to imagine a day without a stress. And if we cannot imagine even one day without being stressful, how can we even talk about a calm life, right? Term stress and feeling related to it became such a norm in our society that it's actually horrifying to think about it. Everyone around talks about stress as something that's supposed to be happening, and if someone else is stressed and pretty much everyone is stressed, we are stressed and we're thinking that it's okay. High school exams, you are stressed. College years, you are stressed. Work environment, you are super stressed. Then retirement, you are worried about your retirement, etc, etc. You get the drift. But if you are watching this video, you already made the first step. You understand that the problem exists and now you are trying to figure out how to solve it. Before we start, I want to put a disclaimer. In no way I'm a stress management doctor and I understand that some cases of stress will be different from the others. But I want to share with you my journey and things that helped me to turn my super stressful version of myself during the college years when I was worried about every single thing to the current version of myself that is more peaceful, stoic and just more joyful. So if you are interested, stick with me. Before we start battling stress and figure it out how to manage it, I think it's important to answer yourself a question, where is that stress coming from? And I'm not I'm not saying that you need to get into nitty gritty and figure out every stress factor in your life. I'm talking about deeper stuff. If you actually think about it, when you are stressed you are thinking either about past or the future. Day before the math exam you are worried about the grade that you are not gonna see in another week. And day after the math exam you are worried about your performance and how that performance will result in a grade that you are not gonna see in the next couple of days. So you see, it's either past, future or both of them. Did you already notice what is missing from this equation? It is now, this exact moment right now. This concept was introduced to me by the best-selling book The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. As the author mentioned in this book and as I'm saying, so far we just talked about the past and the future, but what about now? Answer yourself a question and be honest with yourself. How many problems do you have right now at the exact moment? Think about it. Your boss sucks? Well, that's a problem when you're in the workplace. Currently, you're probably not. Or you have an older car and you're now worried about that. Well, are you driving your car right now at the exact moment? I would hope not. The majority of the problems that you are thinking about exist either in the past or in the future. And neither of them exist. It was weird for myself too to hear it for the first time, but I'm not crazy, I promise you. Think about it. When was the moment in your life when the future existed? Well, let's come back to our math exam that's gonna happen tomorrow. You're probably thinking that, well, what are you talking about? It's gonna happen tomorrow, right? Well, but think about it. The moment it actually happens and the moment you sit at the desk and gonna write the exam, it's gonna be now, it's not gonna be the future. So the future doesn't exist because whatever comes in the future is actually happening at the moment, now. But then you're probably asking yourself, but what about the past? The past is real, right? Well, not really. Think about that date that you had in the past. It was real, right? Well, it was real at the moment when it was happening, so it was now. But then it was already gone. So this date doesn't exist anymore, just like the past doesn't exist and the future doesn't exist. The only real thing that is happening is now. I know it might sound confusing at first, but I hope it makes sense to at least some extent to you. Well, now we know all of that, so what can we do with all of that information? If neither past or the future exist, don't you find it silly to worry about the things that are not real? I personally do, and that's why the concepts described in this book were life-changing for me. There's also another mindset technique that helps me to manage stress and become a less stressful individual. I'm talking about imagining the worst-case scenario. I know, I know, it might sound like the worst possible idea, right? But hear me out. Imagine that you're riding a mountain bike and you're heading towards the edge of the cliff. All of a sudden you're losing control of your bike and you're about to fall off the cliff. Is it worth to be worried in this situation? Well, obviously it's a super stressful situation because, you know, it can be the end for you. But the thing is, the majority of situations will have a least extreme outcome. Let's think about that mass exam that you're gonna take during the second week of the school. Even if you're gonna have the worst grade possible, you're still probably gonna have enough time during the school year to improve that grade. So is the worst possible outcome really that bad? That being said, in the majority of the situations when you're feeling stressed, if you actually actually imagining the worst possible outcome and not just think about it as something that exists, it's actually not that scary at all. And after you imagine it, you can ask yourself, is it worth to put all my energy and nerves into this situation? In the majority of cases, it's probably not. This video is supposed to be a simple guide to the stress management, so now let's move from the mindset steps to some actionable steps that actually support it. 
When it comes to stress management, my essential is meditation. The funny thing, when I was younger, I was getting so frustrated when someone was mentioning some spiritual stuff or some mindset stuff that's supposed to help you in life. I didn't believe in any of that until I actually started to learn more about that and tried it myself. Look, there's a lot of proven emotional and physical benefits of meditation. Gaining a new perspective on stressful situations, building skill to manage your stress, increasing self-awareness, focus on the present, etc, etc. But besides all of that, meditation just calms me down. But please, don't mistake in the function of meditation. If you are feeling so stressed and so frustrated all day long and then you're just coming home and want to meditate for 5 minutes and change all of that, it's probably not gonna work. The idea of meditation, at least for me, is the compound interest. With every session, I'm becoming a more stoic and less stressful individual. And then I'm building that compound interest that will help me to avoid getting into that frustrated and angry mood in general. There's a lot of ways to learn about meditation and start doing that, but since our world spins around technologies, let me share two phone apps with you that I'm using personally and that helped me with the journey. First app is called Medito. It's absolutely awesome app that I would recommend to every beginner. It's free and it's very user-friendly, especially for the people who are just starting with meditation. One of the best things about this app that it has a beginner's guide where it slowly walks you in into that meditation journey and slowly increases the length of your meditations. That way you can gradually introduce meditation to your life and just make it more enjoyable for you. The second app is called Insight Timer and it presents kind of the more advanced level. Insight Timer has free version and paid version, but I'm using a free version and it's more than enough for me. Insight Timer has meditation music, guided meditation, and also it has different filters that will allow you to choose the length of your meditation, the level of it, etc, etc. Why would I recommend to start with Medito over Insight Timer? Well, I feel that the content there is more structured and more beginners friendly, and I think it will make more sense for you if you're an absolute beginner and kind of walk you through that meditation journey step by step. And when it comes to meditation, if I would need to say just one thing, be patient with yourself. The reality is that for days, weeks or even months you're probably not gonna see any results, but then all of a sudden you'll realize that your life has changed 180. Another great actionable step that helps me to reduce stress in life is journaling. Just like meditation, journaling has a lot of proven benefits as well. Improves mental health, encourages self-confidence, boosts emotional intelligence, helps with achieving goals, increase creativity, etc, etc. But besides all of those benefits, what I found journaling to help me with is to reflect on the situation and see a bigger picture. I was constantly catching myself being stressed about little things. For example, I lost a client in my content creation agency, but then I wrote it down, I wrote down what else I did in this month, and I reflected in the bigger picture, and I realized that it was my most profitable month for the agency. So, should I be worried about little things, or should I be excited and happy for the bigger picture? For me personally, that answer is obvious. I can certainly learn from the losing client situation and figure out why I did it, but I'm also very proud of myself and happy for myself that it was like, you know, a great month for my agency and etc. So as I've said, the positive side of the bigger picture exceeds the negative side of the small picture by so much. And when it comes to journaling, let me give you three quick tips that will make it so much more enjoyable for you. When you are selecting a notepad or the journal, I would highly recommend you to pick something that you like. I like the black aesthetic, everything I have pretty much is black, I mean the phone case, the pens, etc. So I wanted to go with something black, it's like nice kind of leathery material, it's a black journal, and I would also recommend to look at the pages and see if you like how the pages feel and that's that's a big thing actually because it will make the journey so much more enjoyable for you. Second tip, pick yourself a nice pen. It doesn't need to be anything expensive, like my pen comes four pack for five dollars or something, but it's Pilot G205 and I like how thin it is. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but it's very thin and I like it because when I write in the journal, it looks tidy and it makes it more aesthetic for me. So I want to write more, right? And the third thing, you don't need to make journaling your everyday activity. It's supposed to be your escape place, something that you like doing. And if you just make it everyday activity and set yourself a goal, no matter what, I'm gonna journal every single day, you're just adding yourself a duty that you're gonna be stressed about. So that's not a goal at all. If you're gonna miss one or two days of journaling, even a week, there's nothing wrong about that. It's always gonna be there for you and you always can start when you left. And there you have it guys. I could talk more and more about the little things that I'm using that help me with stress management, but this guide was meant to be simple and I wanted to keep it that way. Remember, life is a miracle and it's a wonderful gift. And even if everyone around is stressed, it doesn't mean that you need to be stressed. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it useful, I would really appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to the channel for the more self-growth stuff. Check out other videos on my channel and I'll see you in the next one.